All right, Todd Billen, looking at some of these prominent matchups between Georgia and LSU for the game tomorrow, and it's got me wondering who can combat some of these freak receivers for LSU for the University of Georgia here. So Jamar Chase is the the freak of all freaks, right? Not necessarily a big, huge receiver or anything like that. Just a very stout receiver who's extremely fast, that's very versatile and well-rounded with great hands. <laughs> so he's almost like the the prototypical receiver of this day and age. You can just see how strong and powerful he is uh, through the core right here. We see him going against Patrick Sertain here. This, they do a great job, right, on some of these motion to empty. I don't know how many times I have the motion to empty, right? If they're on motion to empty like you see right here, you want to have you have to have the ability to get your hands on these guys because if you see right here, they want to know what you're in. They make you declare. You see the inside linebacker Shane Lee out here flex, uh, gripping the numbers, right? So that means there's a running back that will be his natural assignment in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So they're going to have a rub route right here. But look, Patrick Sertain, he's not even trying to touch him. He's close enough to, to touch him and try to alter this a little bit at the very least to know what's coming. But he just really concedes and he allows Clyde Edwards Hilaire to to run into him right people are going to say oh that's illegal or whatever like that man if they don't call it the man it is what it is so now he's able to get a step on him and he's just too fast man he's just too fast you have to have the ability to get your hands on these guys and decrease the space and be physical with them right you cannot let something like this happen to you um does georgia have the guys to to combat something like that uh let's go back and forth all right, so I was thinking about how they would possibly match up against LSU and if they should probably put somebody on Jamar Chase. But LSU is loaded at receiver. As great as Jamar Chase is, I don't think he's that much better than Justin Jefferson, who is not that much better than Terrace Marshall. And they have Thad Moss that they can put in there and some other receivers that they can bring off the bench as well. So it's good that they just... I think that it's best that they just play sides, right? And for the fact that UGA is loaded at the cornerback spot as well and defensive back in general. Uh, this is one of the most amazing plays that I've seen this year. This literally happened to LSU cornerback Derek Stingley, where he got caught looking at the sideline just like this and got beat over the top by Devontae Smith. Now, this is Anthony Schwartz right here, the fastest man in all of college football, an Olympic hopeful in the 100-meter dash. Now, look at this. DJ Daniel right now taking instruction from the coaches. Boom, while wow, the play is already, look at that. The play is already in motion right now. Now, Anthony Schwartz has a step on him. That's just to show you how fast Georgia's corners are. They got two guys running a 10, 300 meter dash and Eric Stokes and Tyson Campbell. But you have a Juco kid right here, DJ Daniel, in his first year who got a ton of playing time when Tyson Campbell got hurt, who also has some wheels. Look at this. He's able to run and catch up with Anthony Schwartz, almost stay up in his hip pocket, right? So right now, Schwartz kind of has a step on him, but you can see the makeup speed. Look at him. Gaining ground, and this is not a poorly thrown ball. Anthony Schwartz does not really have to break stride, but you can just see the closing speed right here. Look at him. Now he's closed the distance. He just didn't panic right there. Tracks the ball at the end. Makes a play on the ball. Breaks it up. Cannot absolutely wait to see DJ Daniel, Tyson Campbell, Eric Stokes, Tyreek Stevenson. And those guys, Devon Wilson, go against this freaky LSU receiving core. All right, here we go again. The thing about a Jamar Chase or even a Justin Jefferson is these guys are great at going up and getting the ball. They have great body control, great route runners, and they're being thrown to by perhaps the best in the country in Juggler Joe Burrow. So going against Trayvon Diggs right here on a fade. Uh, Diggs is being physical, but hey, you got to be physical back with Jamar Chase, who's 200 pounds. And most of these DBs, maybe not Trayvon Diggs, he may be a little bigger than that, but most of these DBs go about 180, 190 pounds. So there you go. You see the chicken fighting stage, right? Both doing it, both being physical with each other. But I think Chase is just a little bit more equipped to win in these situations than most of the corners. So Diggs tries to turn, right? When he sees Chase trying to locate and track, Guess what? Chase is already on it, baby. He knows exactly what to do. And, uh, look at that. He adjusts back to the ball. That's what a lot of receivers don't do. They let the ball come to them. Chase will adjust back to the ball, help out his quarterback, 
Look at the hops on this kid, man. This is a special player. Look at this. What is Diggs doing? He loses all control. He's like, forget it. I don't even want to play football no more. I would rather twerk. Now look at him. Magic City. All right, so I'm doing my best to make this fair. I'm only showing these guys going against players that will be in the NFL, right, or, or NFL setup. So Florida, to me, in my opinion, has as good a passing game as anyone in the country. It really does. It goes five or six deep at the receiving position and everything like that. So this was a good game um, if you're Georgia to get a feel of what you could see from LSU. Uh, the quarterback, Kyle Trask, is the truth. Everything about Florida setup is the truth right here. So going against Van Jefferson right here, perhaps the best route runner in the country. Uh, DJ Daniel back over here towards the field. So off-man coverage, right? With a, with, a, with a little bit of cushion. I, I don't necessarily like this going against LSU. They will nickel and dime you to death. You definitely got to be pressed up on hands-on man. Hashtag hands-on man. Um, but it is what it is on this one. So you see right now, taking an inside technique, which I would like because LSU loves to go to these slant passes and, and work the middle of the field. That's what they do. They work the middle, work the middle. So taking away that or at least shading yourself on the inside, being able to prepare. But you see DJ Daniel able to get in Van Jefferson's hip pocket, right? So this is going to be kind of a back shoulder fade. And people say you can't defend like these back shoulder fades. Yeah, you can if you're, you know what I'm saying, in, in good position. But look, he makes a POB right here on Van Jefferson. Your Your difficulty of task is right up there. It's a good play by DJ Daniel. He's somebody, I'm giving him a little shine right here because most people don't know about him. Everybody knows about Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes. Uh, DJ Daniel is somebody that people should know about. All right, moving on past that, you're going to have an over route by Kyle Pitts right here. This is something that LSU should focus on, trying to get these particular guys here to have to cover, or even uh, one of the nickelbacks, uh, Mark Webb, trying to get those guys in the coverage. But this is what UGA needs to do, decrease the space. Decrease the space, hands on man, and always have two safeties back. You got to try to compete with the guys up front, first and foremost. You need to get into your nickel packages and everything, but you cannot have just one safety back. LSU, I think, will eat that a lot. Joe Burrow is going to find the best. You got to be able to trust that your guy can work one-on-one -on -one situations if that's the truth. But you don't have to worry about that if you have split safety coverage. So if we can see right here, they, Georgia has struggled against the tight end, and a guy like that, Moss, I think is one of the best in the country. Look at this. They just completely lose him. You got Tay Crowder right here almost like on a checkoff, but he's supposed to be in man coverage. So he checks off, but then he's like, uh-oh, so why are you still staying at the quarterback? Like, you know you know what your assignment is. Now you lose him because you continuously – now he's looking at the quarterback again. How do you go from zone to man to zone, right? You're either looking at the man or you're looking at the quarterback. You're either in man or zone. You can't be in both. So now he's sinking back. I'm not sure if he didn't know what the coverage was, but but here you go. The over route is open. Easy pitch and catch. Can't get chunk played like this if you're the University of Georgia, and it's exactly what you want if you're Louisiana State University. Same kind of deal right here. Three by one formation. You'll see LSU getting in some of that. Uh, you have right here Mark Webb going against Kyle Pitts. So, that's the Huckleberry. LSU needs to target this guy right here. He has nothing to offer in the way of pass coverage. And for some odd reason, they always trot him out there. But look at the, the space right here. He needs to be walked up on Kyle Pitts. At the very least, I would force him to go over the top to where you have your split safety coverage. But if you're backed off like this, they can just work underneath, right? Florida does a great job of doing this, and LSU does a great job of doing it as well. They're very set up similar in that aspect right there. So they'll just take the quick cheese, right? They'll just run stance. Look at that. Double slants underneath with all this cushion. Move the chains. You know, Kyle Trask is going to put it on him. Same way Juggler Joe Burrow will put it on him. Easy pitch and catch. Mark Webb nowhere in the picture. It's not like he can drive off his back. Look at him. Not like he can drive off his foot and take a proper angle to shoot down. So it's just giving up a play. Got If you're Georgia, you got to get that guy out of the game, man. If you're LSU and you can, you want to get into some of your vertical approaches right here because I believe this guy, if I said earlier in this week, can be had. This guy can be had, and you'll see that on this particular play right here. But look, diminished space, press coverage right here by Eric Stokes, diminished space uh, coverage by your man DJ Daniel, 
and then too much space in a slot, right? So you got Mark Webb going against Anthony Schwartz, the fastest man in football. If we see Bo Nix right here, the prodigy on the pull, look, there's a couple of ways, like, there's nothing open right here, right? DJ Daniels doing a good job staying in phase. But if you were to look right here, luckily there's J.R. Reed coming over to help Mark Webb because Mark Webb is smoked right here. He's absolutely beat. And if that's a juggler Joe Burrow, I think he puts it to the outside of the numbers and he hits a long explosive play right here. But if you look right here as well, let's go back some. Got Coy Walker coming right here, but his help, a guy who should be deepest of the deep for some odd reason likes to sniff around like they're playing quarters coverage. He does not even get deep. So he's trying to work with some type of play and he takes an improper angle. And this could have very well been a touchdown as well. Cause look at him. He slowed up. Now look what's uncovering. The ball's not out yet. The ball's not out yet at all. Right. So this could have been uncovered for a touchdown or perhaps or an explosive play. But this guy is good. And DJ Daniel, if you watch him working right here, he does a great job in the transition phase, working back to the ball, and forcing a, an errant throw, right? That throw had to be perfect. So nothing right there. So I think it'll be a good chess match between these guys, right? LSU does not have a physical advantage over Georgia's cornerbacks. As a matter of fact, I would say that Georgia has the better athletes if you're going by wide receiver versus defensive back. But LSU has, to me, the more tried and true approach with the better players at their respective positions than Georgia has at their cornerback position. So what wins out in that particular aspect, especially when juggler Joe Burrow is throwing on the ball? I don't know, but I'll be tuned in on Saturday to find out. It's got to be off the chain, man. So let me know in the comment section how you like to see this set up right here. If you're LSU and who should they target? And if you're Georgia, who should they put on or what type of coverages or anything like that? I'm still flooding the market with this content. All right. With that being said, it's your boy Murph, the Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.